Good morning, guys. I'm the Tech Prepper. Talking about uh, tactical and emergency communications, at least the way that I need to uh, use it for those applications. And um, if you saw in the intro there, we were using a ham radio, uh, a couple of devices uh, to be able to plot our location on a map. And we're also going to be doing some stuff with radio and text messages. So if you're interested, stick around, guys. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so let's get started. Um, what goal was I trying to solve? So I do a lot of backpacking uh, behind the house in the Tonto National Forest, and there's no cell coverage there. Uh, but I'm typically only about, you know, three to five miles from the house tops. So radio is an excellent opportunity for me to keep in touch with my wife. So I had looked at the problem a bit more, and it turns out that since she's not a ham, I can actually use ham radio and a service called APRS, Automatic Packet Reporting System, to be able to, be able to exchange basic reporting information with her, and vice versa in some cases. So I decided to explore that, and that's the subject of today's video. Now, I didn't have the equipment uh, to work with APRS, so my second goal was to do it on a budget, and I gave my budget of about, or gave myself a budget of about $100. I came in at, I think it was $105. Uh, so everything you're going to see in this video is based on what I had on hand and what I had to add to my kit. Um, but before I show you the pieces of what you need, let's talk really quickly what APRS is and uh, this is a very vast subject, so since I'm brand new to it, I'll try to just give you the high level. So again, it stands for Automatic Packet Reporting System. It is a digital method of communication designed for distributing local tactical information like uh, alerts, messages, weather information, location, and it's often found in public service events like facilitating communications for uh, like marathons and races, uh, things of that nature. And it's been around for about 25 years. It was developed by a ham radio operator. I believe his name was Bob Baringa. And uh, in the last few years, it's also been bridged with the internet to allow uh, the ability to send text messages through the platform. And we'll do a quick demo of all of that in a second. So I obviously did not do this justice. I may do a whole series of APRS videos after this one. But roughly, just the, the takeaway here is if you're interested in being able to send messages and tracking location through radio in areas where you may not have cell coverage, this may be the video for you guys. All right, so let's talk about what you need to get started. Unfortunately, my radios do not support APRS. Uh, there are uh, quite a few on the market, but they range anywhere from uh, mid $400 and up. So clearly out of my price range. This is my Baofeng UV5R. I'll put a link to it below if you guys want to support the channel. I believe on the link I have, this is $23 to $25. Uh, so it's a really great uh, radio for this exercise. The second piece you need, uh, this is a uh, terminal node controller or TNC designed to work with APRS. It's from a company called Mobile Link D, and this is their version 2.2 model, which only works with Android. They do have a 3.0 version that works with iPhones. I did not go with it, um, even though I'm not an Android user, because this unit, the 2.2, was $65, and the iPhone version was twice the price. Uh, so for 65 bucks, I can connect this directly to my radio, and all it's responsible for doing is encoding and decoding the digital APRS messages uh, so that it can be sent through the radio and then received through the radio. And then you need a programming, or not a programming cable, but you do need a cable to connect the TNC to your radio. And this is about 10 bucks. So we're about $25 for the radio, 65 for the mobile link D and $10 for the cable. The last piece of inf piece you need is a Android phone. This is a five or six year old phone. It was sitting in a drawer somewhere and I installed a piece of software called APRS Droid. 
And while you can get the application for free on the developer's website, I went ahead and decided to support him and I believe the application was like $4.99. And what's nice about it is that the phone gives you the ability to have uh, mapping uh, capabilities, the ability to send and receive messages, and it does it through Bluetooth between the phone and the mobile link D. So what you end up with is a package that kind of looks like this. Imagine the cable being connected and you have for about a little over a hundred bucks, assuming you have the phone, you have a full APRS system at your disposal. Uh, so one other thing to mention, the reason why you need the phone too is that APRS, if you want to track real-time location, you do need GPS. And since my radio does not have GPS, I get the GPS by virtue of having an old phone, which already has native GPS capabilities. So to keep things fun and light and interesting, and to start with the more general concepts, let's jump into two demos. Uh, the first is gonna be using this system to share and track location. And the second one will be using this system to send and receive text messages. And my primary goal with this one is to be able to send my wife, who is a non-ham, text messages, be able to receive it. And then also, since she's a non-ham, for her to be able to look at a map and see my location and track my progress on hikes. All right, let's start by connecting our TNC cable to our Baofeng UV5R. If you have a different radio, there are other cables available on the Mobile Link D website. Next, we'll connect our TNC cable to our Mobile Link D TNC, and we'll turn it on. Now we'll go to our Android device and open up the Mobile Link D configuration application. We'll connect via Bluetooth. Once connected, we're going to adjust a few settings. We'll start with the audio input settings. And all we need to do is turn up the volume on our Baofeng until we get a red blinking light in the far right hand portion of the meter. And that looks pretty good. Next we'll disconnect from Bluetooth and we'll open up the APRS Droid application. Next we'll start tracking. There are other settings involved, but I'll do a future video on how to configure the Android uh, APRS application. Then we'll switch over to messages, and we can see all of the messages that we are sending in green and the messages we're receiving in blue. So this is great for diagnostics. The next thing we'll do is just quickly take a look at the mapping functionality, and we should be able to see our location here as well as other operators in the area. And just like any Google Maps application, we should be able to zoom in. And that looks like the location I'm actually in. We're in Flagstaff, Arizona, uh, during the filming of this video. And you can see my call to sign right there with the SSID for this mobile setup, KT1RUN-7. All right, we're gonna go ahead and show you how to have non-hams access the same information. All right, so we have a mobile phone and we'll open up a browser and go to APRS.FI. We'll search for our call sign. And as you can see here, we see a lot of information about my station, uh, such as location, distance, but the important one is the map. And at this point, my spouse uh, should be able to track my location on the map as we saw in the APRS Droid app. So she could be located anywhere uh, in the country uh, where she has internet access and she should be able to pinpoint my location. And just like before, it looks like the coordinates are exactly the same. Let's jump into the message section of APRS Droid and we're presented with a call sign and a area to enter in our message text. Since we want to send a text message, we need to use a special call sign called SMS gate or SMS GTE and the message format is the at symbol the phone number you want to send the message to and then your message and then click OK. If you don't want to expose your phone number over the air SMS gate has a nice feature called aliases and you can create an account there they have great instructions and all you have to do is create an alias and attach it to a phone number in this case I created an alias called YouTube assigned it a phone number and I can do the same type of message. 
and uh, what's really critical here is that you do have access to an eye gate in your area and if you do you should be successful and your target phone should receive your text message all right, guys, so I want to share a couple of experiences with you since I'm brand new to APRS. Um, I only have about a week and a half, so I hope I don't uh, mislead you or um, I'm telling you incorrect things about APRS, but this is based on my experience. So the first experience I had with APRS was taking this basic setup with Android, and I decided to do a short trail run behind the house. And I quickly found when I got back that uh, I was not, uh, nobody was hearing my beacons. And I quickly realized that you do need some infrastructure in place. If you live in areas uh, that are closer to the city or in the city, um, you will find a number of digipeters and eye gates that will propagate and retransmit your, uh, your messages. I did not have that in my case. So I did some more research and what I was able to do was I have another radio at the house. It's my base station uh, portable setup. And I decided to set up a very similar configuration as this. And I went ahead and connected it to the internet. So essentially what I was doing was since I was in radio communication um, at the house to my location, I was actually able to send messages back and forth. Uh, so my wife in my ham shack was able to look at my computer on screen and I fired up uh, the software and she was able to see my GPS uh, position and messages I was sending to the base station. Uh, unfortunately, since she is not a licensed ham, she's not allowed to transmit back. So we had one way communication. Uh, so the ability to set up your own Digipeter as a base station, um, whether it's in your car or in my case, the house, uh, gave me the ability to kind of be within about 15 miles uh, of the house, maybe less than that, maybe five miles from the house, I would say. Uh, it wasn't ideal. And if you guys are interested, let me know. I can do a video on how I set up my uh, Digipeter and iGate for my base station at home to work with this setup. Uh, so the next thing I did was I installed a piece of software uh, called Exaster and Direwolf uh, with my uh, signal link. And uh, at that point, I basically had bridged my radio and my base station at home with the internet and had uh, a Digipeter and iGate set up. So at that point, I was able to transmit on this radio my location and some messages to my home station and then that was being propagated over the internet. And at that point, my wife and I were able to exchange text messages and she was able to send me messages back. We were also able to use a service online, a website called APRS.fi, and she was able in a mobile browser to track my location. So she was not now, she was not tethered to um, basically my ham shack and she was able to do bi-directional communication. So that was a success. On the trail, some issues I had with this setup, and this is the setup that I'm not gonna go with in the future for a number of reasons. So, as you can see, I have three devices. So this is three failure points, three pieces of additional weight, and three items to charge. And out in the field, that's not ideal. So I will likely be going with an all-in-one unit at some point and uh, purchasing a more rugged all-in-one radio. Um, I'm still debating whether I want to go new or used. I'm looking at the, on the Yesu side, the FT3DR. I think it's about a $400 radio. So if you guys have experience with that, let me know. Uh, Kenwood also has one uh, that also seems to be pretty rugged. Uh, I believe it's the THD74. So if you have experience with that, please let me know in the comments. I'm curious to see how that works out. Um, or buying one of the older uh, radios on the secondary market. So still kind of debating. Uh, the other issue I had uh, with this system here is that setting the volume is very important uh, for digital communication. And uh, I found that you could easily bump the, uh, the volume control on the Baofeng UV5R. So again, not great uh, since it is jostling around in my chest rig. Uh, the other issue I had too, at one point I took it out of my chest rig and was running with the unit in my hand 
And on the Mobile Link D, there's a button right here. And the pad of my hand had pressed it a few times as I was involuntarily gripping. And uh, I turned it off and back on a handful of times. So it's not great. Um, if Mobile Link D is watching this, what would be amazing for this is to have a uh, mechanical like slider switch uh, that will lock into a position so that it's not as easily uh, bumped. But other than that, it worked pretty well. Um, actually, there was one other thing that happened. The Bluetooth co connectivity, for whatever reason, would drop out occasionally. Um, it's not a deal breaker, but it happened enough times where I did notice it, notice a problem. All right, so the second experience I had was driving the RV uh, from Flagstaff to where we are in Pagosa Springs. And interesting use case, we have some friends that were meeting up here and we had roughly 400 miles to cover and we needed to kind of keep tabs on, they wanted to keep tabs on us on where we were. And we were driving through a lot of uh, the Navajo Nation country and there is no cell service to be had. And uh, so I sent, before I left, the APRS.fi link to our friends, and they were able, for the most part, to track our location. Uh, just like cellular coverage, if there aren't any digipeters or in the area, you won't be able to have your signal propagated. Uh, so there were some dead spots for us as well. So keep that in mind. Like This is not a 100% replacement for cellular coverage. Um, in areas where there is no cell coverage, but there is... Uh, digipeters you're good um so yeah like the bigger cities like durango for example uh gallup new mexico uh we were able to pinpoint our position so very successful all right guys so uh, i hope i have kind of given you an intro into what's possible uh i really struggled struggled making this video mostly because there's just way too much to talk about way too many radios way too much in the way of configuration, but at least I want to give you a taste for what is possible so that you can start exploring. What I will do to make things easier, uh, number one, I'll put links in the description with some of the resources I used to get started. Um, if there is interest uh, in other videos on some of the setup, please let me know. I'll make some videos uh, here and there. Uh, one thing I did that was actually kind of cool, given the fact that this Baofeng is $25, I went ahead and programmed the APR settings specifically for this radio. And this radio right now will do nothing else other than APRS. So I was able to, for example, uh, set the squelch to close or open up the squelch completely so that I wouldn't have any drop packets. I programmed the uh, five channels for APRS all on the 144.390 frequency. Uh, depending on how I wanted to use APRS. Um, so I did about, I think, five or six different settings that were very specific to the applications for APRS. So that could be an interesting video too. Uh, again, maybe doing a video for what I did in the demo where I did all the configuration for Android uh, APRS, the mobile link D configuration. Uh, so please let me know. So again, the point here is not to give you everything you need to do this. I'll link you to a few other videos that can do justice. Uh, but it's really knowing that there is something called APRS that can solve a tactical and emergency communication problem of being able to track and be tracked using GPS and also the ability to send messages. All right, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Mm -hmm.